going to give an overview of the battery de development trends, including the near future trends as well as more far reaching horizon from three to five years. It has been a, a very difficult uh, task for the battery developers to keep up with the new te technologies in electronics that requires a higher energy, higher capacity, as well as maintaining a low cost for the devices. And uh, more recently, additional requirements uh, appeared, such as a high discharge rate, um, as well as high longevity for uh, backup and grid applications. So I'm going to cover all of these different trends one by one. The uh, history of lithium-ion battery as it, as it was introduced by Sony 20 years ago has been that of a continuous linear increase by about 120 million per hour per year if you look at 18650 cell, which is popularly notable, as you can see in this graph, the trend remained pretty much unchanged over this entire history. Uh, but the change in percent has changed drastically. If uh, in the very first year of development, the change was close to 30% in one year. But uh, in the 2013, the same 120 million per hour per year corresponds to 3.5%. So that is a very small change. That uh, Unfortunately, there is no expectation that this trend is going to change. But even this uh, rate of change has kind of slowed down in 2010 because the chemistry that is used, lithium cobalt oxide and graphite, pretty much finished all the possible technical improvements to it and uh, there is a need to introduce some new chemistries to continue this trend. So what could, what was done until now? Pretty much it was evolution of a battery material packaging, like making thicker active materials, making thinner separators, but that could cause potentially some safety issues. Um, yeah, other aspects of material engineering could be using higher density um, graphite for anode, or different morphology of a cathode material. At the end, this resulted in about 3000 million per hour cell for 18650. And pretty much that is it. You cannot really improve it any further by doing just the simple engineering improvements. At the same time, the cell manufacturers have been struggling with the cost structure of the manufacturing. The cathode for the lithium ion cell is, was lithium cobalt oxide. And it has a, it is a pretty rare metal. It is not used in a very large volume in the industry. And for that reason, it has a huge fluctuations in price. You can see that when the lithium ion battery become really popular close to the, in about 2008, there was a huge spike in lithium, in cobalt price. It went about $50. And then in a couple of years, it dropped to, uh, le uh close to $10. So this kind of, Five times changes in price uh, for um, some product production where this material is about 90% of its cost, uh, not working out for a good business model. So everybody tried to replace cobalt with something else, like nickel or manganese. Luckily, there are some good capacity cathode materials that are using nickel and manganese, which are similar to cobalt in chemical properties. So you can see on the left side here, there are many different materials that are using these other metals. Unfortunately, they have a lower average voltage for the battery. As you can see, the trend that if you go from cobalt oxide, you can get more capacity, but lower voltage. So in overall, the energy might remain the same or close or even increase somewhat depending on particular material that you're using. The same thing is true for negative uh, material, basically anode materials. So if you go from graphite uh, to other materials like silicon, you can get a much bigger capacity, but you get uh, higher voltage. Well, higher voltage is bad for anode because it, anode voltage is subtracted from overall battery voltage. So it, it is good to have as low as possible. 
So you lose some energy, but you get more capacity. In overall, you can get higher energy battery using uh, some of these materials. And uh, that is why experimenting with different materials uh, for lithium ion battery is going to be the trend for next a couple of years. So the nickel and cobalt containing materials are already used in some of the notebook cells, even though they have a lower voltage, especially at uh, low SOC areas close to the end of discharge. It is not a problem for notebook because they put many cells in series, and so overall system voltage can still be higher. Uh, I mean, the battery voltage can be still higher than the system voltage because of many cells in series used. So th for that reason, these NCA and NMC cells, are, NCA stands for nickel, cobalt, aluminium, and NMC is nickel, manganese, cobalt. They're both good materials. The NMC is somewhat better in terms of safety and high power capabilities, so it has become popular with automotive applications for the next couple of years. And they're going to replace the first generation batteries used in LEAF, for example, or GM Volt with the NMC chemistry. The first generation was using manganese spinet, which has even higher voltage but much lower capacity. And NCA is mostly used in notebooks because it has even higher energy, but not as good safety and power capability. But these chemistries uh, didn't find much use in cell phones and any other uh, single cell applications because they lose about 20% capacity if you shut down your discharge at 3.4 volt. But 3.4 volt is the place where they actually stop the discharge in most of the cell phones. And so the other development that is right now already appearing on the market is uh, adding some silicon to, uh, to the anode. And this way increasing the capacity of the battery, but at the cost of having lower voltage again uh, close to the end of discharge, basically in these regions. So you can see here the gray line, gray line is just graphite anode. And with adding some amount of silicon, you are adding some capacity, but all of this capacity is staying below 3.4 volt. So if you're just going to discharge the, your battery until 3.4 volt, you're basically not gaining anything if you use silicon. So it will be initially used also in notebook systems, again, which have uh, many cells in series. And at the same time, uh, eventually some development, some hardware improvements would allow cell phones and tablets also to run to lower voltages. For example, if you use a bug boost converter at, after the battery, you could maintain uh, your system input voltage still at 3.4 volt, even though battery voltage actually went below that. Uh, here is the overall market snapshot of what we already have in terms of various battery voltages. And you can identify by these uh, graphs which battery voltage, uh, which chemistries are more popular. And this is based on our chemical ID database. Since we support about 80% of the whole notebook and cell phone market for battery gauges, we have a very good idea about what batteries are used. And, uh, so the, the red and yellow line here corresponds to the most high density, basically. That's where most uh, system, what most systems are using. And the other, the green and blue, correspond to more rarely used systems. So lithium cobalt oxide is still the most commonly used. Then the NCA is, is here, is becoming popular in notebooks as well. NMC is present, but not very common. And uh, some of the higher voltage cathodes or manganese spinner can be seen here. Uh, higher voltage cathodes are not necessarily using manganese spinel. Some of them are still using lithium cobalt oxide, but with the different electrolytes and different composition, different uh, ratio between anode and cathode material allows to go all the way to 4.35 volt. And lithium iron phosphate is a battery that's popular in uh, high power applications like power tools. And in some automotive uses, it has a much lower voltage and correspondingly lower energy density, but it has a good safety and longevity properties. So the other way to get to higher energy instead of uh, trying to get more capacity is to go to higher voltages. So th this al already allowed to improve energy density for lithium cobalt oxide based cells by going to 4.35 volt. Before that 4.2 volt was the maximum voltage and about that electrolyte will start decomposing. 
Uh, manganese spinel also allows to go to higher voltages. Um, unfortunately, most electrolytes are unstable at the high voltages, and so this is an area of active development. If somebody could develop electrolyte that will be very stable up to 4.9 volt, there is a couple of very promising materials that could be used for cathode that would increase both energy density and both voltage and even capacity if we could have a higher voltage electrolyte. Here is the kind of a menu of, from which, of various cathode materials that we can select. And they are plotted in terms of both voltage and capacity. So you can see lithium cobalt oxide is kind of in the middle. So it doesn't have a huge capacity. It has about 150 million per hour per gram and kind of intermediate voltage. There's plenty of materials that have a much higher voltage, but at the cost of lower capacity. And there are some materials like the ones that I mentioned earlier, nickel-based, that have a higher capacity but lower voltage. Recently, there have been development of a material that's called over-litiated oxide, or OLO, which uh, has uh, the best advantages of both worlds. So it has a bigger capacity as well as bigger voltage. So this is a material that is a subject of a very active development. So once electrolyte is available that can support it, and the material itself is optimized to improve its cycle life and power capability and so on, this is supposed to get us additional 30% improvement in energy. So this is the most favor favorable future cathode material for the next uh, two to five years. And there is have been indeed a very promising development for high voltage electrolytes. There's one uh, Wattka cat discovery technologies is a startup that is uh, specializing on testing a huge number of various uh, modifications of electrolyte in parallel. And this way they can find the optimal electrolyte. And they, they found an electrolyte additive here, for example, that allows to go to more than 600 cycles with cycling to 4.85 volt, which is pretty amazing. I mean, most electrolytes just cannot do anything with such high voltage. And this is an example with normal electrolyte that you would basically lose more than 80% capacity in just 200 cycles. That is where it is considered that battery is dead. So, but with this improved electrolyte, you can get close to 700 cycles, the same condition. So this overlitiated oxide, oxides um, is a kind of a composite material of two different oxidation states of manganese and other metal. And uh, the, the metals exist in two different oxidation states. So all of these other kettles that I was discussing earlier, they all have oxidation state plus three for the metal. But in all of some of the metal is in oxidation state plus four. So effective oxidation state is 3.5. And that is, is what gives it the higher voltage. The higher oxidation state, the higher voltage you'll get. And uh, this material also has high capacity in addition to that. So it is kind of a win-win situation. So this material still has some problems. For example, it, uh, electrolytes are needed, as I mentioned. The capacity loss is high on the first cycle. So we have to add more material on the anode side then to compensate for it. And, but uh, the safety is not too bad. The thermal runaway 250C, it is uh, pretty close to an NMC. So the, it is estimated that at 2013 we will be at 250 watt hour per liter. And that is indeed where we are right now. So pretty much with some small amount of silicon added to anode. And our cathodes, once the uh, all our cathodes will kick in. We should really get to 600 watt hour per liter in 2014. But uh, so far, I haven't seen any samples of that material, so it might be delayed by, an, uh, by a year or so. So the other requirements that uh, recently appeared are the higher power capability. As you can see, if you are using some device at a high current, like full discharge in less than an hour. So if you just discharge in one hour, which means one C rate, you have some amount of IR drop. And so you will reach your 
minimal system voltage a little bit earlier than you would at low rate of discharge. So you lose some of the capacity, but not that much. But once you go to really high rates, like a 5C rate, for example, you will have five times more IR drop. So you will lose much more of usable capacity. And in some cases, you might not get any usable capacity at all because you will instantly go below your system termination voltage. So to improve this, you have to have a very low... Uh, Do you have residual for the next hour? Okay, well, I'll finish now. Uh, please come in.